Welcome everybody. This is off chain and we're heading to lesson three to four. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, March 1st. <laughs> yep. Good to go. And without further ado, let's move into the lesson. Yeah. So we we okay. So let's head to lesson three. Um, actually, lesson three is supposed to be an assignment, so I'm gonna brush through it. I believe um you tried your hands on the codes, and I just noticed that there are some important stuffs in lesson three. That uh, we may need to talk about. And um, so today's class is going to be very brief. Try to see how, how we can go. So we, we've done this how to import from Open Zeppelin. I mean, go to eight. And you can take a look at Open Zeppelin and try your hands on some of their contracts. So the last week too, we we saw what a functional modifier can do. Okay, functional modifier. So we made a functional modifier. But um, the last functional modifier we made does not really require any parameter, any argument. So you can actually make a function modifier that takes in an input. And this is okay. I'm here now. So let's say you make a functional modifier that allows an input. Or that takes in a parameter here. So um, we we guess the parameter should call should come from the function itself. Okay, so let's say you made a function driver car, okay, and this function is a public function, but you want it to be restricted. Only people calling this function, the people that can call this function must be above 16 years of age or 16 exactly 16 years of age. So you can create a, a modifier, a functional modifier called older than, okay? So modifier older than and hard code the age of the, I mean the age limit you want and then the user ID. So you get the user ID from the function call or from the parameter speeding to the function. So that is basically that. And then um, let's just brush through all of, all of them. So um, by now you should, you should try out these things, you know, it's not just about watching the videos, try it out and see what you can do. And then you remember um, solidity, I mean, to write on the blockchain is very expensive. So in this lesson, they, showed us so many ways we can actually um, save gas, you know, cut gas costs. Okay, try to be more audible now. Um, so what, what you can do is, um, let, let, let's say you want to take in an input, okay? And you're very sure that this input is not going to be very long, okay, depending on the byte. And, and, you, and you saw that 256, Okay, a unit 256 is going to be a, an overkill. So you can reduce it to be maybe unit 16, 8, you know, depending on, on whatever um, a parameter might be. So this is going to help you save gas, you know. And, um, and then when you're writing on memory, I mean, on storage, Okay, when you're writing on storage, so when you are writing stuff on the blockchain, you are also you know consuming gas, especially when you're calling functions that are on storage. We're gonna say it. So this is what he is trying to say. Try to cut, you know. I mean, if you think this can go to 16 and still function properly, okay, you can change it to unit 16. And another trick is to we're gonna see it when we go down. Sometimes you call things using the view function because when you, um, 
honest. Let me give you an example. Okay, so you know this is a public function, okay? And this is gonna consume cache. So when we make a function that has a view function, I mean that has a view visibility, let's say this function has a view visibility, it simply means it's gonna go, it's gonna take in, I mean, it's, it's just going to read from the blockchain and not add to it, okay? As it's not gonna change states. Okay, so, so there are some um, functions you're gonna build, okay? And you want it to take less gas fee. One thing you're gonna do is then you, you make it to read from a view function. So even though a view function does not consume gas, when a function that consumes gas, let's say this function, okay, reaches from a view, let's say you say, when you call this view function, I mean, this feed and multiply function, okay? If it is gonna read from the from a view function, it's still gonna cost gas. When you read through here, you're gonna see what I'm what I'm trying to explain. And there is a trick to do this. So this is where they say storage is expensive. And Okay, and here they are trying to say, I mean, instead of writing things on storage, okay, you can use memory to to write on it, and then you use the your for loop to go through it. Um, let's let's see what. Okay, let me go to the next one, and we're gonna take a real life example and see how this is very useful. Okay. So in this very function called uh, zombie, get zombie by owners, okay? So this is like a kind of a function the, the front end is gonna use, okay? to display the user's zombie or the zombie the users have, okay? And then, you know, if, I mean, if you don't use, um, if you don't use this kind of tricks, okay, by using a view function and a center view function, you know, to call whatever you're gonna call and then not writing or changing state, okay? But just getting it off from, um pushing this thing onto memory okay you see that you're going to consume a lot of gas i mean whatever function is going to call this is going to consume gas so this is like a trick um to avoid um i mean to reduce gas to reduce um um, um gas that is used when the function is called so you put it into an external view function i mean you put the function into an an an, an external um I mean, you call the function external and make it a view function. Um, I was just trying to rush over this, so my explanations may not be great, but um, it's very easy when you read through it, okay? So you already know JavaScript. You just push through and get whatever information you want. And, um, okay, so let's go to lesson. Okay, but before that, I need to show you this. I need to show you this uh, one step back one. So that you don't get okay. So actually you you remember let's let's look at this function now. You remember when we create when we created a, a variable, I mean an array. An array can be dynamic or fixed. A fixed an uh, array, how we know it is that it has a number in it so my cursor is here now so let's say when we call let's say we want to create a, a an array okay array of units called values so if it is going to be a fixed array we have to define the number of um of array is going to be if it is going to be six array you know um array with six element then we put in six here inside this um square bracket but now when you are, 
But now when, when you are in a function and you want to use this kind of a trick, okay? So this is what you want to do. When you want to instantiate a new memory and you want to call in the length of that array, you don't put it inside. What you do, you, you, you create a bracket, okay? So this is simply stating that create in, okay? So this is simply stating create a new array of units, okay? Of size three. So you see how it differs from when you're creating this inside, I mean, when you're creating this as a state variable, when you're creating as a state variable, you put it, you know, inside, inside the um, square bracket. You're gonna see um, some of these things when you start, you know, doing a lot of coding. So um, but this can get you confused, but it's just like um, the way it is done. So let's quickly run through this code. Um, function get array, okay? What does it do? It creates a new array of unit 256, okay? And it's fixed three. And then, so that whenever you push zero, okay, so you can push, you can push um, the number one to index zero index two, index three. So it, you can push to index, index, um, index three because it's just a three size array. Let's quickly go to chapter four. In fact, chapter four, this, this lesson, that's chapter four lesson is, is very easy. I checked the content there, it's nothing much to it, except two or three things. So I'll quickly say those things. Mm, and that would be nice so that you have time to run your code and, you know, and catch up if you've not been following or if you stop somewhere. So payable function. Now, we know that um, Ethereum is associated with money, okay? So we can move it and uh, move some other uh, tokens. And um, so if you're creating a function that is gonna accept money, you have to define, you have to put in that, you have to put in a keyword. Some people call it a mod, a function modifier. Okay, let's use that, let's use that term here, yeah, a function modifier called what payable. And before we go, they try they try to summarize so many things. They try to summarize what a private function is. You still remember private function is um, when you call a function and make it private, okay? Like you make a function and make it private, you know what it's gonna do? So only your contract can call those that function. And even a contract that inherits the function cannot call it. But when you make um, your function of, internal um, um, visibility, um, anybody, I mean, your contract can call it and the contract that inherits your contract, that very contract can call it. So Zumbi, this contract is what? Zumbi helper. And you can see Zumbi helper inherits Zumbi feeding. So every, this is Zumbi feeding contract, right? And Zumbi feeding inherits Zumbi factory. Very interesting. So every other thing is inheriting of every other thing. So this is inheriting ownable. Zombie feeding is inheriting zombie factory. And helper, zombie helper is inheriting zombie feeding. So what, what happens when you um want to deploy this contract? You just you just only have to deploy zombie helper. Okay, because since zombie helper is inheriting from this, 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 every other thing is gonna work. So you don't need to deploy this contract one after the other, just deploy this because it is it is as good as ownable Zumbi factory and Zumbi feeding are inside the Zumbi helper contract. And so back to what we are talking about, about payable. So when you wanna um, create a function that takes in money, you know, that, that involves transfer, transfer of um, Ethereum or each sort of, um, you you have to use the payable um, function modifier. So this is an external, it's a function by something, external visibility, meaning it can be called outside of our contract, okay? 
that's another contract that is not our contract and call it and it's it is payable so can you see what they did message they said require message of value equals to 0 0.0018 and this is very simple this is like um um what would i call it like a unit okay this eta is a unit okay so if merely you say 0 0.001 eta the, the the solidity code understands that this is you're talking about and um, eta itself and message of value is a global variable yes global variable just like message or sender you remember message or sender message or sender is gonna is gonna just take um the, the address of the of anybody that calls the contract okay and put it as message or sender so whatever money you're going to pay in will be represented as message dot value so this contract is, is trying to check check if the money sent in by this user or by the caller is equal to 0 0.001 eta so that that's basically what it is and um, this very level is just trying to remind you to put in payable in your functions for every functions that we take any it and then um you can you can order uh, do some, and some other things like let's say you create a contract that collects money okay let's we can see here we erase the payable function okay Anyway, okay, this is the payable function. Okay, that means this contract is going to receive some money. Okay, let's say the they say require message of value equal to level of fee, and level of level of fee is zero point zero zero one eight. Okay, that means this contract is is going to keep on collecting zero point zero zero one eight for anybody that wants to level up. When you um, read through the con uh, contract and do the assignments, you're going to see that in this game, if you really want to level up, okay, you pay some it to level up. I think when you level up, what, what happens is that it gives you more chance to win the game, okay, to win games. Okay, so now, but you know, there is something missing in this contract. If you are putting in money into this contract, you should create a function that helps you to take away the money. And this is what this chapter two wants to tell us. Okay, we need to create a either a fallback function. Uh, okay, now sorry, this is a withdraw function. You create a withdraw function that takes in that you know that can help you to transfer that money to either your wallet, okay, as your Ethereum wallet or whatever, or whatever wallet you are using. Um. So the take home assignment here is that even though you are going to transfer, okay, you have to make sure that the, the person you are transferring to. So this is how the logic goes. Owner, it can be anybody. So and when we created the contract here at the owner dot sol, we we put in a constructor that accepted the color of this contract as message dot send. I mean, message just sender yes, club this contract as the owner. So we are now creating a function to make us take away all the money in this contract, okay, to the owner's wallet. And then you do this by calling owner, but there's something missing here. You need to make it payable. So any wallet, any address, any, any address that we receive um, that money should be payable too. So, and that way, when you are writing that contract, you have to write something like this payable owner dot transfer. So transfer is like a function in Solidity. Okay. It just when, when you use this word transfer, it simply means you're transferring and value, you're transferring a term. So transfer dot this. Okay. Let's see what this means. This is another kind of keyword that will I call it a keyword? Um, I will check it, but what it means is this refers to you know this contract you know when you deploy this contract it's going to have a an ethereum address so it is referring to this whenever you use this so you should be careful about how you use this okay 
and you should try to minimize the use of this as much as possible so that you don't um, put your co contract in the hands of somebody. So this is referring to this contract. So he's just trying to say, transfer all the money, okay? That's the balance in this contract and transfer it to this person. So what is the take-home assignment here? The person you're transferring to, you have to make you know, kind of um, um, make the person's contract payable, okay? By using, you know, see the way I did it, okay? Doing payable bracket, then transfer. And then you have to cast this um, this to an address, okay? Dot, dot balance. So um, let's say you, you want to know that the balance that is in your contract and you created a function. Let's say the function balance. Ah, sorry. Function balance, and you made it public, but you you use the only owner, only owner. Uh, where are you coming from? You use the only owner modifier function, okay? Which I I I believe you've you still remember what we did. So only the owner can call this function. This is a function modifier. And um, so you, you, if you create a contract, that, a function that just tells you what's the balance of this, I guess you have to typecast it to address. Mm -hmm. Let's be very sure. Uh, I don't know if you need to typecast it to address. I need to check. I need to double check, but this will still work. Yeah? I believe so. So this is this balance, okay? It's just trying to say get the balance of whatever is is in, is inside here. So it's going to get the balance of the each in this in this contract. And then by here we're using the transfer, okay, to push it to somebody. So it can be it can be any Ethereum address. So I believe that is clear. Let's move on. Okay, I, re I really checked this and basically the same thing. I mean, they didn't really say much. So here they want you to make a new contract and then um, a new contract called, an empty contract called um, Zombie Attack that inherits, inherits from Zombie Helper. So it's gonna inherit from this. Mm, not too much. Um, okay, here, I think this will be the end of the lesson so that you can have time to practice more. Everything in chapter four is purely what we've done. And it's very, in fact, it's easier. It's very easy. It's just basically to, it's just basically logic and it is not as hard as lesson three. Lesson three has a lot that you need to go back and, and, and learn and then ask questions on this code. So here, in this game, okay, they want to generate um, some random numbers. What? Why do they need it? They, they need it in, in such a way that if you if you level up and you buy an F NFT or you, you or you buy a zombie, that you know they they have different kinds of zombies. Some zombie when you fight with it, you have maybe seventy percent chance of winning or fifty or ten. You've played this. I believe you must have played this kind of games online and on, on the blockchain. So what, what happens at the background is that the computer kind of gets, tries to get a, a random number, okay? Let's say a random number from one to 100. Okay, if that number is, is let's say between one to 70, okay? W one to 70, and if your chance of winning is 70, that means 70%, that means it's between one to one to seventy. It means you're gonna win, okay? But if it is maybe from seventy-one to so you're not gonna win. If your chance of winning is between let's say is twenty percent, and if the number okay is below is below um twenty, you know you you are gonna lose, okay? But the take home assignment here is that you can you remember when we started we try to 
to hash some values. And before you can use this function to hash any value, okay, you have to pack it. Um, you, you have to pack it because this value actually takes in only bytes. Um, and um, so there are so many tricks that you can use, okay, to get a random number. So here, this is a keyword. If you did lesson three, you're gonna remember, you're gonna know what this, this is just now trying to give you the, the time, okay? You're gonna use the message of sender. And here they try to use a run nonce. They, they just implemented it themselves. But um, the, what you have to know is that never, never, never use this kind of stuff to generate random numbers. If you really want a true random number, you try to use an Oracle like chain link and there are a lot of them. Why? Because I can call, you know, even though you think you're generating a random number, I can I can call this function. I can still call exactly what you wrote, okay? I can write a function like this, okay? And then point it to call, you the, the let's say the, the game function and it's still gonna give me exactly the same thing. I'm gonna keep on winning all the time, okay? Take home an assignment. Not, nothing there is no really random number you know that there, there, there is a way to do it anyway but it's too slim don't um you shouldn't do it okay so when you need a random number you go to oracles anyway but this is just for purpose of teaching and it has you know makes you explore more about solidity and 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 yes they said it here okay and they really wanted you to make some games so when you follow the class, you're gonna see. And I think, yes, and at some point they taught us how to use Oracle, which is very um, easy. Why is it easy? Because you'll be, um, you're basically gonna be calling a, another contract. Let's say you're gonna be calling chain link contract. And when you remember, we've already learned how to call another contract by interfacing, okay? You, you do the interface to that contract, okay? Where and you put in the functions you want to call, automatically, automatically Solidity will build um, the ABI, okay, from that interface. And then you put in the contract address and then Solidity, we, you know, you're going to put them together and call whatever contract you, you want to call. So we have basically learned the basics and when we get there, it's going to be very easy. Okay. Um, I think I, yeah. I really went down so, and basically these are everything we've almost done. I think we're gonna be calling it a day for today. And then um, the next class, I think we will be doing something NFT, I'm not sure. Let me check. Okay, ERC721. 721. This will be nice. We we'll see how far we're going to go. Mm, it, it, it would have been nice if we jump into it, but you know, this is like something different from the normal thing we are doing. So let's call it a quit. Thank you, everybody. Um, today's class is kind of very easy because it's, um, it's, it's built upon what we've already known. Okay, so and it will equally give you time to do some, do um, I mean write these codes and see how far you you can go and then ask questions on Discord or on the WeChat group. So Ben Ben is driving and I'm not I'm not sure if he can hear me, but if he can, then hey, we here. can call it a quit. All Hello, right. Ben. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Testing, testing. No, I think my speaker is having some issues. Can you hear me now? So we're going to end the meeting now. All right, cool, man. Can so you next time we, we move into ERC21, that's the running stuff in crypto now, in the crypto world. Um, okay. But I assure you, this is even the easiest one. And so keep on, I mean, do those assignments. Okay, I can use this very opportunity. I think Ben is not hearing me. Let me do what I wanted to. There's something I wanted to show you all.
which is... Hey, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Hello, hello, hello. Very hello. Important. Um, yeah. So as you're building... So many of you know, Ben is trying to get to you. Bit, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why nobody can hear to... me. <laughs> Maybe there's a problem with my Zoom, but... Uh, I, 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 can can hear you, ben, I can hear you, but I think MJ okay. can get you. Ben can hear us. Okay. Okay. okay ben, no worries. <laughs> um, probably I will check why you can't talk. Ben can hear probably you. Don't worry. Talk because uh, Hadi, can you talk? Hello. Yeah. 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 We can so, we can Hadi's hear speaking. Ben, but you can't hear Ben for some reason. Okay. Yeah, we don't know yeah, why. For <laughs> some reason, MJ can get you. Hadi. Ben. Yeah. Okay. I guess no other person can hear any other person yeah. except me. I'm That's gonna strange. go ahead and end the recording. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll keep talking. Um, just hold on, Ben, and just in a minute. So, okay, for you to actually practice um, some of the things you are doing, okay, I encourage you to, um, you can move your code, okay, copy and paste it and move it to Remix. Remix is an online IDE, um, by, by the Ethereum community. I guess so. So. I'll just basic, I will teach you some of the basics. So what you do here is that you come just like the normal IDE, right? You can create a file, you can see these are, and you know, wonderfully, anytime I open, you know, these are some of the stuff I work with long time. Anytime I open it up, I still find those, those, those files. Wow. So I don't know how it keeps track of who I am because I didn't register, but that is by the way. Okay, let's take this. Let's let's take this contract and this contract for an instance. Okay, this is a contract called um, force destroy. Okay, it, it it takes in a constructor. Remember, a constructor is a special function that is called only once at the start of the function. Mostly, we use it to put in some critical values and to to make um, an owner. And then, um, okay, this function is very simple. It takes in destroy. Okay, as a self destroyed property. Yeah? Okay, yeah, self-destroy. Okay, we'll learn that later. But anyway, my aim is to tell you that after writing the contract, okay, you can come over here. So those contracts you've written on, on um, and Crypto Zombie, try it out here, you know, compile it, see how it looks like, okay? So remember we comply, uh, I mean, sorry, compile every contract, okay? So that um, it, it's gonna be compiled down to the machine readable language, okay? So it's gonna be compiled to um, by codes. And there is this little flyer Ben sent out the other day. So when you've written your contract or when you copy and paste from Crypto Zombie on, on, uh, from your assignment, okay, then come to compile and then compile it. You can see we are compiling our compiler. We're using um, a compiler from 0 .0 0 0.8 to 0. Point, you know, not more than 0 0.9. So you can choose the compiler to use here, okay? Then what language is Solidity? Just leave every other thing here on, on default and just simply click Compile. Usually um, it's gonna read your Pragma and put you into the line, uh, right um, compiler to, re to use. But if you don't really want 0 0.8 and you wanna compile it with 0 0.8, it's still cool, okay? so. Compile. So I'm compiling now. Let's see what is going to happen. So, what does the compiler do? Like I said, compiles it to a machine readable language, and then it gives you out another thing, the ABI. You remember what we use ABI for? ABI tells the front end the functions to call. Okay, basically, or it or, or it tells us the function to call, and ABI is basically JSON. We're going to compile. Okay, it has compiled, okay. And um, can you see, this is the ABI, and this is the bytecode. So now it has compiled, we can deploy. Okay, we can deploy it to testnet, mainnet, whatever net we want, or we can deploy it to Java VM. So let's see how, what, um, Let's see what ABI looks like. So if you want to know the ABI of this contract that has been deployed, I mean, that has been com I mean, compiled, you can copy it out here. Let me put it here. 
So this is like the ABI. This first of all, let's see how many functions do we have here? One, two, right? Is it one? This is like a fallback function. Yeah. So okay, let me um let me let me tell you what it this is like a callback function is you actually use it to receive money from this contract. And I think these days you don't really need it, but you can but um when, when you put it, okay, I mean, you should have it. So far, you want your contract to receive money, put in this fallback function, okay? Usually, you can you can, you can can decide not to write a name and just say function. So, and then, but you can decide to say receive, external payable, blah, 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 okay? So, you can actually write in some logic here if you want. So, this is where hackers can use to, they can write in some logic that drains your, 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 your contract money. So we're going to learn that later anyway. So we want to see what ABI looks like, okay? ABI, can you see? This ABI is just trying to tell us the function we can call. First of all, you can see that this ABI is basically JSON, okay? So what is it trying to say? It's trying to tell us the functions that are available. It's trying to say that there is a function available called destroy. Do we have it? Yes, okay? What is it? Does it produce an output? No. Does it have an input? No. Let's check if it is true. Destroy. It doesn't have an input and it doesn't produce an output. Very good. So, um, is it a payable function? No. Today, you learn what payable function is. A payable function is a function that can receive um, 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 ERC20 token. What is it? It's a function, okay? And um, so, Let's say the other one. Okay, I have. Okay, this is like, um, you know, this is this. So I wish I have another one that has more, more functions. So basically, you can actually write your own ABI. Okay, let's say you see a function that you want to call and you don't, you, you didn't, you can't assess the ABI. You can just write your own ABI. So what you do is that you copy other ABIs and then use it as a template. So let's see what the bytecode looks like. <clears throat> so um, when, when you read a little sticker Ben showed to us, you're gonna understand what opcodes are and what bytecodes are in a, in a nutshell. Be, might have to dig it up again in the post. Anyway. <clears throat> that is, by the way. So these are the this this is how the opcode looks like. Push push one and blah blah blah. Very helpful, you know, when you want to decode. Um, but kind of little bit advanced. You don't really really need it. So the next thing you you do after you've compiled your contract, okay, you've compiled a contract is to deploy it. So you decide to you decide where you want to deploy it. Do you want to deploy it to the JavaScript? VM, that's visual machine, okay? You, you, you use this, um, this is like a simulated environment, okay? Like Ganache um, and the rest of it. Or you can use your injected, you know, you can, you can deploy the, any contract you're, you're working on, on, let's say Java, sorry, on testnet. So when you wanna use testnet, you, you use injected <laughs> web three. I think it'd be great if we could uh, and, um, do a demo maybe next week where we can show Ganache. Not going to I don't know if I know if can hear me, <laughs> but it'd be great if we could do a demo on how to use Ganache locally um, so that you don't have to- I have to check what is happening on the background for my injected web tree. Usually you should- You can use chat okay. then to tell okay, me- injected web tree. So when I want to inject yeah. it, I'm going to, let's, let, let's do this and see. Let's say I want to deploy this contract, okay? So you have to make sure the contract you are deploying. And we want to deploy this very contract first, <clears throat> destroy. So you simply hit deploy. Hey, um, Omar, can you hear me? Oh, I don't think you can hear me either. Something went wrong. 
But um, anyway, that is just um, how it works. Okay. So when you use injected Web3, it's going to MK. pop up your MetaMask. Okay. And then MK. when you want to deploy, you either set set it to the to the chain that you're working on. Okay. You can set it to whatever chain you're working on. So if, if you want to use the Coven, um, Coven testnet, so blah, blah, blah. That's it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call it a quit. I'm going to call it, um, a, um, we're going to end it today. So um, just to recap, pushing whatever code you have here, oh, I would have loved to show you how to interact. Okay, let me, since we still have time, let me use um, JavaScript EVM. Deploy, why is it asking me to put something in deploy? Let me check. Okay, so you see, you see, it's requesting for something. Okay, something on the in the constructor. In the constructor, we we required it to. Okay, this is something I was doing in Ethernet. So probably I need a contract. Uh, would have deployed something else. Anyway, let me let me grab one of the fake addresses and see if it's gonna work. Okay, I said deploy. Okay, so what actually, why this is um, re requesting something is that on, in my constructor, okay, I required, on my constructor, I required something. Oh, the audio is broken. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Ben is talking to me anyway. Um, okay, so um, that's why it's doing something and deploy, okay? So now I have deployed a contract. Can you see on it with a click of a, of a button, I de deploy the contract, okay? So this contract, this is the name of, this is the address of the contract. This is the address, okay? How do I know it here? But there is still a better way to do it. We're gonna learn it. But this is the easiest one you can use. And Remix is really good. So um, can you see? So why why did I bring you here? So I brought you here so that you can actually test out your code using Remix. Okay, you can actually test out your code using Remix, which is um, a very good one. Okay, so when you've compiled, deployed, all your all the functions, okay, that are callable, public and external, we appear here. Okay, and then you can play with it. Okay. And here I want to do destroy. I want to call this function. Okay. So you see this function destroyed. Destroy does not take in any variable. I mean it doesn't take in any input. So if it does, you're gonna see a a widget where you can put in whatever you want to put in. So that is that. Um, and then we'll say bye-bye for today. Uh, oh, good. Almost 15 minutes. I I wish it ended 7.30. Okay, Ben. Yes. We can, we can call it a, a day for today. <laughs>